In 2007, one of our Utah Conservation Corps crew leaders, Andy Zimmer, was in a bike accident um, that resulted in a pretty high level spinal cord injury or paralysis from the chest down. At the, at the time, I was a crew leader for the UCC running uh, just one of the standard crews. I suffered a spinal cord injury and left me paralyzed from the chest down. So sitting in my hospital room, uh, Kate and I kind of had multiple conversations about how I really wanted to finish my commitment with AmeriCorps and fulfill all of my terms of service. Traditionally, Utah Conservation Corps projects are located in remote areas and require our Corps members to be in excellent physical condition. So there was a need at that time to, to develop some new projects that didn't rely so heavily upon physical abilities to accomplish our goals. And so Andy and I started brainstorming about um, developing an inclusive crew and the types of projects that that, that crew could take part in. Kate really uh, picked up the ball at that point and ran with it, and we started uh, developing the idea of the inclusive crew. We really wanted to get this inclusive crew off the ground. It would be a mixed ability crew made up of core members with and without physical abilities. We, we first spoke with um, our local ranger district, Logan Ranger District, and discussed with them you know, various options for, for projects that this type of crew could work on. There was a real need for the Forest Service to develop transition plans, um, which are plans that prioritize what needs to happen on the ground in order to make trails, facilities, and campgrounds accessible to people of all abilities. So there was a need to get these transition plans in place and aid them in the development of these plans. So uh, that just seemed like the perfect fit for this crew. Not only having people with disabilities on the crew, but having people with disabilities play a, a critical role in accomplishing our project goals and objectives. The Utah Conservation Corps project worked with the Forest Service to develop a fully accessible database. They did all the field testing, troubleshooting, and populating of the initial round so that the Forest Service now has a replicatable database so that the information that's gathered once can meet all of that data information for the agency. Great kudos to the UCC inclusive crew to pave the way for better service for everyone in the future. The main project that we developed was um, working again in partnership with first the Forest Service and now we've expanded to partner also with the Park Service on conducting accessibility surveys and reporting back to them on what needs to be done based on our experiences on the ground. We also developed um, an accessible community garden. As part of that design, the inclusive crew created accessible raised beds, um, tabletop planters, hardened pathways, adapted tools so that community members with disabilities could actively participate in the community garden. What makes this garden unique is that all of the raised beds and accessible aspects of the garden were designed and constructed by people with disabilities for people with disabilities. If you're going to have a community garden, part of having a community garden is including everybody in the community and of course folks with disabilities are part of the community and that's definitely um, a group of people that we want to include. So it is important to have um, a portion of the garden be accessible. One of the other things that was also important to us is not have it look like the accessible portion, like back in the corner somewhere. Um, so that's kind of where the design came from, the idea of making it universal, making it a gathering space. Um, so it's not just for folks with disabilities and it doesn't look like it's for folks with disabilities. And we just make sure that the path of travel is big enough, wide enough, and hard enough in order for folks with wheelchairs to use it. 
Oh, uh, this zone's awesome. Okay, <laughs> Quinn, I'm gonna help you scrape out this area. Okay, we just gonna scrape it towards us. Yeah. More than enough care. Well, I hope that this garden serves as something demonstrative in the moment-to-moment -moment instances, like the sort of uh, techniques that we've used out here to make the built environment accessible. I hope that those things not only get used by other people, but also get other people to think about what else could happen. We have to function as a unit all the time because that's the way we're the most efficient. And of course, it's the most rewarding experience to work like that. Over the past few years, the Utah Conservation Corps has learned a tremendous amount through trial and error. It's important to have projects that are, that are meaningful and important if your program is to be sustainable. What you don't want to do is create projects that are just feel-good projects. It's so important to put people with disabilities, mixed ability crews, really any crew, um, in a position where the work that they do is meaningful and agencies are going to want to hire them again. So it's important for Conservation Corps, Service Corps to go out and, and do their homework and research what the needs are in their community, a project that they could conduct and be really successful at, and it's a project that's, that's needed. The big picture for Service and Conservation Corps as it relates to inclusion would be that it is celebrated within each of our corps. It's something that our corps are interested in and are actively pursuing and that it incorporates all aspects of their programming. Inclusion benefits everyone, um, not just the person with the disability, but those people that actually serve, anyone that serves in the program. As a recreation manager, I do inventories, I look at sites and things, and uh, having been out now and worked with the crew, I've, I've learned how much I overlook and how sometimes it's the small things that matter. What this crew was able to do is pinpoint small things that we could correct that would make a big difference. The inclusion is not a difficult thing, that it should become a common everyday practice. When Conservation Corps are out on trails, working in campgrounds, and visible by the public and interacting with the public, it not only shatters stereotypes within the Conservation Corps crew, but also among the larger community when they see AmeriCorps members, Conservation Corps, that aren't made up of just you know strong, young people doing physical projects, but people of all different types of disabilities and backgrounds out there giving back to their communities. This was really important for the Forest Service. All programs and facilities are to be designed for all people. That's what is inclusive recreation. So what could be more appropriate than inclusive crews working on any Forest Service project. When the agency says we believe in inclusive workplaces and recreation sites, these experiences change the way people think about themselves and about others. It gives people an opportunity to feel like they have a say and that they have involvement in the community. And so I would highly suggest that people take a look at this, this model that we're putting together and look at implementing it, I think it'll change lives. This is a great program, so if they don't have one of these access crews yet, they definitely should. To make inclusion a priority. And once, once you have that vision and you make the commitment to make it happen, all of your other decisions become very easy to make. Just try it out, risk it, it'll be great.